This conference will now be recorded. We start again then. Anyway, uh, thank you for giving the opportunity to speak today. Um, about 90% of this presentation is unpublished data. Uh, can you go? Um, I'm Jim Keck with Jackman Laboratory. Next slide, please. So the goal of the disaster we started developing about four years ago was to have a fast, sensitive, and reliable in vivo model for CRS. We want to be able to differentiate individual antibodies with the same target, like different affinities. We want to be able to evaluate drug effects on individual PBMC donors. So instead of asking questions about black and white, we want to ask questions of gray, how individuals respond to a therapy. We want to have reproducible data from the same donor. We want to be able to monitor small PBMC samples for clinically relevant indications. In other words, we don't want to have, we don't want we want to use as little PBMCs as possible because because of the issues coming from getting samples uh, possibly from patients in the future. Uh, we want to determine potential adverse drug combinations, and we want to determine drug dose response for both cytokine release and efficacy in the same mouse. And we want to be able to evaluate therapeutics for the treatment of CRS. Next slide, please. So um, we use a P this is a PBMC platform. Um, in our platform, we use a lot of different mouse models, NSG, the NSG STM3, the NSG double knockout, and some new experimental models, which I'm not going to talk about today, but um, I'm really excited about it because it seems they have um, increased sensitivity for CRS. Uh, depending on the model, we get T cells, NKs, B cells, and we're getting myeloid cell uh, populations as well in some of our mouse models, and um, I can talk a little bit about that offline. Um, for human cytokines, we uh, these are all human. Okay, we also can look at mouse, but the data I'm presenting to you today is human, and it's uh, the cytokines are of course donor dependent and also mouse model dependent. Uh, so we got the interferon gamma, TNF, IL-10, IL-6, IL-4, and IL-2 as our standard panel. But we also get induction of MIP1 alpha, Rantes, Rantes, MIG1, uh, MIG, uh, IL-12, P40, uh, IL-8, uh, IP10, MCP1, and so on. And we also get the uh, uh, markers of A, B, and fast ligand. Next slide, please. So this is the this is the basic model. Okay, um, this model is essentially the six-day model, but uh, for efficacy, we go out as long as 10 days. So Essentially, from beginning to end, the longest it goes is 10 days. Okay, so what we do is we take an NSG mouse or a variant of that, and we um, treat it with, we radiate it, we inject with uh, PBMCs. Okay, at day five, we confirm humanization. I can tell you about after about 300 experiments over the last four years, we've already had one experiment where we didn't get human uh, humanization. The sixth day is we add our therapeutics. I should tell you that we use between five and 30 million PBMs, PBM, PBM, PBMCs, but almost all of our experiments are between five and 15. Okay, most of them are getting closer to, to five and 10 at this point. We only use four to five mice per arm. All the data I'm gonna show you has error bars on it. Um, we're hoping to go um, also use the lower numbers. We run OKT3, an anti-CD28 uh, uh, super agonist that's commercially available, a T Genero 1412 analog that we had made. We do single agent and drug combinations. And CAR-T, um, the CAR-T platform is a little bit different than what I'm showing you here, um, but we're doing autologous and allogeneic CAR-T looking at efficacy and toxicity in PBMC humanized mice. It's a relatively fast assay. Uh, it, it's, you get all the data is completed in about 14 days. Uh, and we're getting some real exciting data from the allogeneic stuff, and maybe in the future I can present that. Um, and we looked at things like cytokines, body temperature of the mouse, mouse clinical evaluation, downstream toxicities uh, on the mouse itself, immunophenotyping, and CRS in relationship to efficacy. Next slide, please. Uh, on the server, it's a publication we gave, um, was published in FASTEP in July, and um, if you want to look at that for Comparisons between in vitro and vivo, whether this is a CRS assay or GVHD, we feel strongly it's CRS. The data is presented in the paper, reproducibility. Next slide, please. This is just one slide to put, you, put things in context for you. This is done in the SGM3 mouse. Um, y axis is picograms per mil on the, on the um, sorry, the y axis is picograms per mil, the x axis is time. One hour, two hours, four hours, and six hours. 
Here we're doing a dose response with TGNRL 1412 analog that's shown in pink to purple. And as you can see that in IL-6, it's peaking out around four hours post drug treatment. Anti-CD28 is shown in green. And you're getting about 125 picograms per mil of IL-6 as you peak in this experiment. Then your TNF is the first side that kind of comes up for us. Um, and uh, this is actually, a, like I said, time course from one hour, two hours, four hours, and six hours. I can, I can see we have a we have a pretty decent dose response, okay, with this therapeutic. Next slide. Okay, so I now I want to talk a little bit about downstream toxicities uh, in this mouse platform. This is a collaboration with Sinise Mohan and uh, Curtis Meyer. And in this experiment, we're looking at uh, liver enzymes, we're looking at um, static, um, uh, downstream toxicities in the mouse, like in, based on histology and caspase 3. The basic experiment protocol is shown right here. Uh, day zero, we put in the uh, PBMCs. Day six, we confirm we add the drugs. We do um, clinical observation of the mouse. And at day 10, four days post drug treatment, we look at liver enzymes. We look at and we do tissues for histology. This is in, this is in the NSG double knockout mouse. Next slide. So this is a H and A staining of the liver. Um, PBS is on the left and anti CD28 in the right. And as you can see, we have significant immune cell infiltration in the liver with this therapeutic. We see the same thing with TGNRL 1412 and OKT3. Um, this is, we just did some multiple experiments and uh, clearly we're getting high levels of infiltration. Next slide, please. Here we're looking at single cell necrosis of parasites occurring uh, in, in, in this, um, this experiment with anti-CD28. And the arrows are indicating some of the cells you see. Um, there's obviously it's significantly more of those um, going through this necrosis as well. So we're seeing um, liver uh, um, cells dying. Next slide. Uh, we did caspase 3 staining of the same experiment, and uh, we're seeing is PBS on the left and right is anti CD28 once again in the liver. And as you can see, we're seeing uh, uh, primarily um, immune cells dying. It's shown by caspase 3 staining. There's some faint suggestions of uh, staining in hepatocytes, but to be honest with you, it's uh, it's faint. Next slide, please. This is the infiltration in the lung, um, two from magnifications, and with PBS, anti-CD28, and TGNRL 1412 analog. And as you can see, we have high levels of infiltration in the lungs, very high infiltration of the immune cells into the lung, and it's drug-related. Next slide. And I, I, I want to make sure I, I did say that this is Sanish Mohan and Curtis Meyer collaborators on this project. Uh, this is uh, caspase 3 staining of, of the lung. And once again, we're seeing some staining with caspase 3 and by the anti CD28 and T um, um 1412. Next slide. We do a lot of work with bispecifics and single agents as well as in combinations. I, because of time, I'm only going to focus on the CD19, CD3 bispecific. I'm not going to be talking about EGFR and, and the BCMA, but that data is pretty exciting too. Um, and we're looking at cytokine release in, co in context to drug efficacy in the same mouse in these, in these projects. Next slide, please. So this is the basic format. This is the first experiment was done in this, this in the base NSG mouse. Once again, irradiate, check PPMCs at day zero. Or because we want to capture efficacy, what we do is we put in Raji cells luciferase label half a million at day five okay at day six we do the treatment okay and next, next slide please okay so i'm showing here interferon gamma and tnf and three different donors eight four eight five eight one three zero and eight two five nine and essentially if you look i want you to show the donor variability if you look at the purple that's the cd19 cd3 by itself you see significant levels of variability when it comes to picogram induction of um, interferon gamma. Also, there's some difference in background. In for 8130 and 8259, we also combine the CD19, CD3 with the uh, with rituximab, which is an orange. In the case of the interferon gamma, it's slightly higher than the single drug by itself. But with TNF, TNF is really sensitive to combinations. And um, in donor 8259, you can see a significant doubling 
of the side of, of the TNF induction. Um, and this is at six hours. So this is not peak. This is um, this is uh, way past the peak for TNF, which is at two one, one hour. But you can see the individual mice are shown in, uh, in, in uh, by the black dots, and you can see a doubling of the um, TNF levels in combination with the two drugs. The next slide shows IL-10 and IL-6. So once again, we have elevated levels of, in combination with those two cytokines. Next slide. Okay, so I really want to focus on dose ranging uh, of drugs and efficacy in the same mouse. And this is, we, here we're using only 10 million PBMCs. We're using Raji cells again. Um, and then you have your um, drug treatment at day six. You do xenogen imaging of your luciferase labeled uh, uh, cancer cells and uh, various readouts. Next slide. Okay, so this is a dose range in studies. Okay, uh, we have the purple is the highest concentration of CD19. That's 0.1 mg per kg. And it goes all the way down to the all to far right is the light blue at 0 0.00001 mg per kg. Now, as you can see, we have a nice smooth dose response with interferon gamma, starting around 5,000 picograms down to about a couple hundred. TNF on the right-hand side, once again, we're going from about 400 picograms per mil. And this is at six hours once again, so um, peak is actually at two hours, so the levels will be higher earlier in the um, treatment cycle. Next slide. IL-10 and IL-6. Once again, the, dot, the dots correspond to individual animals. The error bars are shown. Next slide. IL-4 and IL-2. Next slide. Okay, this is the efficacy done in the same mouse. Okay, and on study day eight and 10 are two and four days post drug treatment. And um, what we're doing is we're doing a TGI. So we're comparing everything to the PBS control, which is the gray. And as you can see at 10 days, at four days post drug treatment, we're seeing a, a pretty good TGI between 15 and 70%, 15 69%. Um, reduction of tumor volume or tumor uh, mass burden in these mice and all the concentrations except the, the last one. And um, if you look at the anti-CD28 green, it's actually uh, higher than the PBS control. And that's because anti-CD28 eliminates the CD4 populations by about 80%. Okay, in, in, in uh, human uh, CD4 cells. And so obviously you, you lost that allo response of the immune system against the cancer. You see the oxygen we're growing faster. Next slide, please. Side-by-side -side comparison of this of the uh, of interferon gamma uh, dose response to that you see with the efficacy. And just wanted to show you um, in this individual, okay, the sweet spot, okay, when it comes to dosing is that uh, at the 0 0.0025 mg per kg, we're getting good efficacy with um, less cytokine re um, release than you see in uh, higher concentrations. But this is one individual. Next slide, please. We, we ran a bunch of other PBNC donors for the same kind of experiment, and I'm gonna show that data to you, but it's, it's the same format, once again, in a double strength, uh, and then on, and then NSG at double knockout mouse. Next slide. Once again, we get, we get these smooth dose responses, okay? Um, and just so you see in this experiment, we ran OKT3 as a positive control. This is um, BioX um, antibody. And we're seeing, um, once again, we're seeing high levels of interferon gamma and your TNF. Next slide. Okay, so this is to make things easier for comparison. Uh, we've plotted out a whole bunch of different donors this way, and here we're going from low to high versus high to low. So you've got your picograms per mil on the left and your fold increase on the right. Okay, so from the same data, and what you can see is that you focus on the fold, per, fold changes, you can see we have a relatively smooth um, dose response. So we're seeing obviously donor variability. Each individual is different. Some get higher levels of cytokines and lower. Some have, some have higher 
a fold increase over the background and others. And um, this is for the interferon gamma. Next slide. ENF, once again, we're seeing these uh, differential um, picograms per mil increases as well as um, the, the fold differences between different individuals. The fold increase here is obviously pretty significant between 9602 and some of the other donors. Next slide. Aisle 10 on the left, picograms per mil. On the right hand side, once again, is your fold increase. Next slide. And here's aisle two. Next slide, please. Okay, this goes back to the idea of looking at efficacy. Once again, in the context here, are two different donors that are pretty diverse. Okay, um, the one I top one, top donor, okay, the uh, nine six three six. You got your cytokine on the left, and you got your uh, uh, TGI on the right. And you can see uh, this is one I showed you before. But the donor below is significantly different when it comes to the, uh, the efficacy you see. Only the two highest concentrations at two and four days post-drug treatment do you see any signs of um, uh, reduction of tumor burden in, the, in this in these, um, experiment. So once again, we're seeing some donor variability when it comes to response to um, therapeutics, which you know kind of makes sense. Next slide, please. I want to address the, the issue of a reproducibility of the data. And um, I want to do it in the context of cytokine release and efficacy. So next slide, please. So we took 9636. This is the same LucaPAC. So I should tell you that I, we work exclusively on LucaPACs. I keep about two dozen um, going all the time. They're pre-screened. We, we basically reject about half the PBMCs we look at because we want to make sure it represents the human population that we have characterized over to, over the last four or five years. So we want to, we don't want to burden, we don't want to um, bias our data by looking at only type, one type of PPNC donor. But this donor 9636 was done twice in this experiment I'm showing you here, and they were done two months apart. So it's, this, it's, it's um, once again, it's the same um, leukopac, okay, you, the various drugs I'm showing you, and just the variability is you're seeing um, from these two different experiments. So um, experiment one, experiment two, picograms per mil is on the left-hand side, fold increases on the right. And as you see, once again, we still have a dose response. Next slide, please. So um, this is a side-by-side -side comparison of the two experiments okay, uh, done two months apart. Okay, in picograms per mil on the left, and the right-hand side is fold increase. And once again, we're going from low to high, okay, from left to right. And as you can see, um, the comparison of the two, two, for two different experiments. Next slide, please. Same results, same experiment. This is with TNF levels. As you can see, the, they're both taken out around 350 picograms per mil. And the fold, in, the fold increase. Next slide. IL-2, once again, we're getting um, about 1,000 picograms per mil of IL-2 with, with this donor. And the fold increase. And here's the efficacy. Okay, essentially, the side, this is the same um, same uh, side by side um, of the uh, efficacy we've seen for these two different experiments. And I'm just showing you the data. We're seeing uh, uh, um, the TGI from these two different experiments. And I think they're fairly similar, um, but you can make your own conclusions. We did be initially show you some significance on this experiment. Next slide. So this is a summary. Uh, I just want to point out that it, essentially in one experiment or platform, you can address a lot of different things at one time and you can compare things that, in those kind of experiments. You can look at single agent and drug combinations. You look at cytokine release, drug efficacy. You do immune phenotyping, which I didn't get a chance to show you. You score the animal health of, um, over time. 
you could look at liver enzymes okay, uh, in, in the blood of these mice. You can do histology, and essentially all of it can be done in approximately 10 days from beginning to end. And the last slide is my, our collaborators, um, essentially the people doing the work in my laboratory, or product development department are shown there. Uh, Lenny Schultz in, um, in, in Bar, Bar Harbor, Maine for Jackson Laboratory, our collaborators at GSK and University of Massachusetts. All these people did all the great, all the work. I just sat in my office and drank coffee and read the newspaper. So I have a um, very strong collaborators, and I want to thank you for your time. And hopefully, I didn't go too long. Thank you so much, Tim. And now we're going to stop recording, and we'll open it to questions. <laughs>